Yeah, I wasn't invited. Ellen, you were invited. You gave me a bunch of about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. What happens when celebrities, known for their poise under pressure, decide enough is enough? When rude questions fly and personal boundaries are crossed, some stars aren't afraid to flip the script. From shutting down invasive inquiries to walking out mid-interview, these moments leave fans in awe and critics stunned. But what makes these shutdowns so unforgettable? Stay tuned as we dive into the most iconic moments where celebrities bit back at disrespectful interviewers. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. might be the king of cool on screen, but his calm demeanor masks a sharp instinct for knowing when an interviewer crosses the line. One moment that truly left fans talking was his viral interview with British journalist Krishnan Guru Murthy in 2015. What started as a simple promotional conversation about Avengers Age of Ultron quickly took a nosedive into uncomfortable territory when the interviewer began prying into Downey Jr. MS troubled past. But let's pause for a moment. How often have we seen celebrities squirm under such pressure, trying to salvage professionalism? In this case, Robert Downey Jr. did something we all wished more celebrities would do. He didn't flinch, stutter, or falter. Instead, with class and grace, he made a decision that set the internet ablaze. As Guru Murthy shifted from discussing the film to questioning Downey Jr. about his past substance abuse and political views, you could feel the energy in the room change. The actor gave brief, polite answers at first, hoping the interviewer would refocus. But when the questions became more personal, his patience visibly thinned. The audience, meanwhile, was left on the edge of their seats, waiting for the turning point. And then, it happened. Bye-bye, Downey Jr. said with a smile, standing up and walking out, leaving the interviewer stunned. No shouting, no dramatic gestures, just a dignified exit that spoke louder than any words could have. He didn't give in to provocation or lose his composure. Instead, he reminded everyone of a simple truth, even celebrities have boundaries, and it's okay to walk away when they're crossed. What made this moment even more powerful? It wasn't just Downey Jr.'s exit. It was the ripple effect that followed. Fans rallied behind him, praising his self-respect, while critics condemned the interviewer for turning an otherwise professional conversation into a tabloid-style interrogation. But the lesson was clear. Just because someone is famous doesn't mean they owe anyone an explanation about their past. And here's the shocker. Downey Jr.'s graceful departure didn't hurt his public image at all. Quite the opposite. It enhanced it. People appreciated that he stood up for himself without making a scene, showing that class and confidence go hand in hand. Now this brings us to an important question. Should interviewers have free reign to ask whatever they want, or are there lines that should never be crossed? Downey Jr. certainly made it clear where he draws the line, setting an example for others in Hollywood. So what can we learn from this moment? Respect, both given and demanded, is key in any interaction, celebrity or not. And as Robert Downey Jr. demonstrated, sometimes the most powerful response is to simply walk away with your dignity firmly intact. Cara DeLeving some stars shut down rude interviewers with icy disdain. Others, like Cara Delevingne, have wits sharp enough to turn any potentially ugly exchange to gold. Witness her infamous Good Day Sacramento interview, where dry tart humor twisted what could have been a seriously awkward engagement into an instance that fans still refer back to. But was she ready to put the cap on the interview in such a sarcastic tone, or was that part of her appeal? Setting the scene. DeLevingne was in town to talk up her movie Paper Towns. The interview started off on the wrong foot, with the interviewer calling her Carla instead of Kara, a small mistake, sure, but one that clearly set the tone for what was to follow. From there, things only got weirder, with questions veering into odd territory and a condescending tone from the host that implied she wasn't as stoked about her own movie as she should be. Can you imagine? being called out for not being enthusiastic about something with which you are so passionate? Well, Kara wasn't going to let that one slide by. Not in anger, not in defensiveness. Kara did what Kara does best. 
She pulled out her own brand of dry humor and turned it right back. As if the question of whether she had read the book on which the film was based could even be asked, she replied with sarcasm dripping from every word, Uh, no, I never read the book or the script, actually. I just kind of winged it. So deadpan, the host didn't even realize she was mocking them. Her tact was to be rude by showing how absurd their questions were, rather than addressing it head on. Well, here's where it gets ugly. The interviewers continued to badger Delevingne, and one of them questioned whether she was sleepy or irritated. And Kara? She played it cool, calm, and collected, responding with a smile. No, I'm still excited. The premiere was last night and it was an emotional moment but I'm not any less excited about it now than I was a few hours ago. Her tone, total sarcasm, and finally the big finish. After a few more back and forths, it was as if the interview just ended abruptly. The hosts were trying to make it seem like she was being unprofessional, while Delevingne just laughed it off, leaving fans to wonder if this was her way of shutting them down for good. Did she walk out? Or did they cut her off because they couldn't handle the sharpness of her wit? The open loop begs us. Was it intentional? Or simply because they couldn't hack it anymore, humor-wise from Kara? Sarcasm is an amazing tool, especially when called to duty in pointing out an argument's absurdity without calling a person out. DeLeving's dry responses showed she didn't have to raise her voice or lose her cool to make a point. She kept her cool, and at times gave us examples of how one can deal with a rude interviewer simply by showing them how really ridiculous their questions are. She smirked and stung, turning the tables on them, the interviewers scrambling to keep up. Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan has been no stranger to pressure, but this counts. Having had his fair share of blockbuster films and being one of the most in-demand actors in Hollywood, tough interviews have been a dime a dozen. There is probably one moment, though, that sticks out. A red carpet confrontation with someone who wasn't just a critic per se, but more on the lines of an old high school classmate who used to bully him. When Jordan met the interviewer, sparks flew, and it was quickly clear this wasn't going to be any ordinary high school reunion. It started innocently enough when the interviewer greeted Jordan warmly, but then went on to say this wasn't just any reporter, this was someone who had once tormented him back in their school days. Michael B. Jordan, composed as ever, at first showed no signs of tension, but then the bombshell dropped. The reporter casually said and implied how they used to make fun of him for bringing his headshots to school, relegating him to the butt of their jokes. Imagine someone mocking you about your dreams and then watching you fulfill them. But Jordan didn't lose his cool. Instead, he chose to head it off, with a grin full of confidence. Yeah, I was that kid with the headshots, he said, and look where that got me. There was sweet revenge in the words, sans bitterness or spite. It was a great response, both acknowledging the struggles of his past and showing just how far he'd come. As the interview went on, you could feel the squirming from behind the reporter's facade. They were surprised by Jordan's poise, a realization that they were talking to a man who had risen well beyond their juvenile taunts back in high school. But Jordan wasn't done yet. I'm still that same guy, he added, but now I'm on this side of the camera. Where's the drama in that? Now the plot thickens. Did Michael B. Jordan's urbane rejoinder finally shut his critic up once and for all? Or was there an epilogue after the cameras stopped rolling? Well, one thing we do know is that this bit of public confrontation put into motion one of those universal truisms. The best revenge is success. Jordan didn't have to lash out or belittle the reporter. He basically let his career and his calm demeanor speak for itself. It's the kind of scenario all of us dream about, isn't it? Coming across someone who has doubted you, mocked you, and even bullied you just to show them how absolutely wrong they were. Jordan's response was a masterclass in restraint, proving sometimes the most powerful shutdown is simply rising above the noise. Matt Damon, Defending Teachers with Passion Matt Damon has been no stranger to impassioned causes, but when an interviewer challenged the worth of public school teachers, 
He didn't just defend his own principles, he became the voice of millions of educators. That was how things fared in a heated exchange at the Save Our Schools March in Washington, D.C., where Damon was an outspoken supporter of public education. As the interview unfolded, what had started as a question about the motivation of teachers turned into one of Damon's most memorable defenses. Some actors defend their craft, but Matt Damon, he took a stand for an entire profession. In a world where so many teachers are talked down to and talked over, Damon was there to remind everybody why their work counted. The interviewer seemed to suggest that teachers might not have the same motivation as other workers because they had job security. Damon's response, a mix of passion and precision. You think job insecurity is what makes me work hard? He tossed the interviewer's logic back at him. Damon didn't stop there. He said that what really drives teachers isn't the money or the security. It's having an impact on the future. With almost every word, you can feel how deeply frustrated Damon truly is with what has become the perception of teachers, as he starts to demolish the thought that fear of job loss is what actually drives passion. He didn't yell, insult, or raise his voice. Rather, he tried to put into perspective that in teachers, society has placed some of the most challenging yet vital jobs. His calm demeanor only added to his argument, and in a snap, the interview went viral becoming one of those moments for anybody in the world who really believes in the power of education. Was this a bold stance by Damon that left the reporter speechless, or did it simply add fuel to the fire? That's where the intrigue is. While the interviewer tried to fight back, Damon held his ground to defend teachers as the unsung heroes who should be treated with no disrespect, but rather respect. In this case, it wasn't just the celebrity status of Damon speaking volumes, but rather how articulately he expressed frustrations from legions of educators. It wasn't the singular celebrity shutdown of an interviewer. It's that around any bend sometimes lies a full-on articulate argument against disrespect. Damon could have dismissed the question or deflected, but instead, he took that as an opportunity to shine a light on an issue that continues to affect millions. His words reverberated so much in that one interview that it left a mark among the fans and critiques alike. Dakota Johnson vs. Ellen DeGeneres Quick-witted and playful banter are par for the course with Ellen DeGeneres, but even daytime's queen wasn't quite prepared for unflappable Dakota Johnson. Now considered one of the most famous talk show moments of all time, in 2019, Dakota flipped the script on Ellen in an interview that turned a casual conversation into a viral sensation. But what exactly happened, and why did it leave Ellen scrambling? Ellen built her brand on being able to poke fun at her guests, but Dakota wasn't having any of it. The interview started off innocently enough, with Ellen joking she hadn't been invited to Dakota's birthday party. How was the party? I wasn't invited, joked Ellen. And this is when things took a little turn. Dakota, in one beat, responded with the now legendary line, Actually, no, that is not true, Ellen. You were invited. The energy in the room momentarily changed with silence. Clearly, Ellen had not expected to be called out in such a manner, and Dakota's calm and firm correction left her, she and everyone else in the room for a few moments, speechless. Who would have thought Dakota Johnson outwitted one of the sharpest tongues in showbiz? Fans were used to seeing Ellen in control, but here was Dakota, holding her own and politely refusing to let a false narrative slide. What really made this moment riveting wasn't the fact that Dakota was honest, but in the way that she did it. She wasn't confrontational or impudent, just refreshingly forthright. It is from this open loop that the question now lingers. Was this some sort of conscious stand on behalf of Dakota? or was she playfully correcting the record? Because as the interview continued, crystal clear was the fact that Dakota wasn't about to let the moment be brushed aside. She went further to insist that she was invited by Ellen, while the latter tried to pass this off. The fallout from this interview was huge. Both fans and critics hailed Dakota for standing up to one of the most powerful personalities on television. But this also brought into focus a new trend, Celebrities no more shied away from questioning the narrative set by the talk show hosts themselves. 
So what did Dakota say that left Ellen scrambling? Well, wasn't only the correction that threw Ellen off, it was the shift in dynamic. For once, the power of the show was placed in the hands of the guest, not the host. This exchange between Dakota and Ellen marked a turning point in the way we look at celebrity interviews. These were the days of stars who would laugh off any awkwardness or allow their host to take control of the narrative. And Dakota proved it's okay to speak up, even if that means challenging someone as adored as Ellen DeGeneres. In the end, it wasn't about a birthday party. It was about honesty and balance in the power dynamic that makes up celebrity culture, the Bee Gees. When humor crosses the line into disrespect, sometimes the only option is to walk away. Just ask the Bee Gees. Few celebrity walkouts have passed into legend quite like the Bee Gees' dignified exit from Clive Anderson's 1997 talk show. The brothers, Barry, Robin, and Maurice Gibb, had endured a series of backhanded compliments and snide asides from the host, all ostensibly in the name of humor. Anderson's continued poking into the band's legacy finally struck a nerve, and in one defining moment, they decided to walk away. But what made this walkout so iconic? The Bee Gees didn't lose their cool. They didn't start yelling or storm off in an angry fit. It was simply an exit, one born out of confidence and respect for oneself. Barry Gibbs' calm but firm words, you're the one who's being rude, reverberated around the studio. The gobsmacked audience beheld them while Anderson, realizing at once what had just taken place, began to backtrack. Too little, too late. It wasn't an isolated incident, but rather one of the first times a celebrity fought back against disrespect on live television. The open loop here sends us wondering, was this case the setting for how celebrities would handle disrespectful interviewers? It certainly did. With their graceful exit, the Bee Gees gave the media a very powerful message. Laughter at a celebrity's expense does have its limits. And if those limits were crossed, then even stars were not afraid to leave. Sometimes silence speaks louder than words. The walkout wasn't just to protect their name, it was actually a masterstroke in the art of handling the narrative. By not continuing the interview, the Bee Gees had drawn a line in the sand to show that no amount of success or popularity justified disrespect whatsoever. Their walkout, quiet and resolute, defined not only their career, but the likely course of similar situations that their futures in celebrity might bring. This remains a lesson in the art of self-respect, one which reverberates with stars and fans alike. Why these moments matter. These celebrities didn't just stand up for themselves. They rewrote the rules on how celebrities should be treated by the media. Each time a celebrity pushes back against an interviewer who is being disrespectful, he or she is not just making a statement for himself or herself, but also carving out the future of celebrity culture. These incidents have caused a ripple effect that resonated for years to come, from Robert Downey Jr.'s classy walkout to Cara Delevingne's biting sarcasm and the dignified exit by the Bee Gees. They have set new standards of how media personalities should go about conducting their duties with regard to respect for the subject's personal space. What is intriguing about these moments, though, is the power dynamic they have managed to shift. No longer are celebrities expected to just sit there and take whatever the interviewer throws their way. These celebrities have shown that they will take control of the story if it starts to go out of kilter, even going as far as flipping it on them. And in so doing, it might serve as a lesson to the media on the need to tread more circumspectly. In today's world, interviews are instantly shared, dissected, and critiqued online. Thus, the stakes for how celebrities are treated have never been higher. The open loop here is, how will these confrontations shape future celebrity interviews? It's a question worth exploring in particular, as we move on to seeing more and more public figures who just say no to playing along with an unrespectful or inappropriate line of questioning. As it were, these pushbacks have emboldened other stars to speak up. We've seen a growing number of celebrities walk out of interviews, call out rude questions, or even directly confront interviewers in real time. But why does it matter so much? 
It's because those moments symbolize the shift about how we go about thinking of fame, power, and respect. Gone are the days when a star only had to smile and nod. Now celebrities are claiming respect, and they're not afraid to make that line known once it has been crossed. This new dynamic in the relationship between stars and the media has really transformed the landscape in terms of entertainment journalism, with mutual respect being the more likely call of the game. Ultimately, these are more than just viral moments. They are potent reminders that even out in the blinding lights of center stage, respect is simply not up for grabs. The media may own the microphone, but increasingly celebrities can afford to walk away when the line is crossed. As we've seen, celebrities aren't backing down when faced with disrespectful interviewers. From Robert Downey Jr.'s classy exit to the Bee Gees' unforgettable walkout, stars are taking a stand and setting new standards for the media. But will future interviewers meet the same fate as those we've discussed today? Only time will tell. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more updates on your favorite stars. You won't want to miss what's coming next.